That match finished this morning around about, what was it, about half past ten, something like that. We were immediately on the blower to a guy called Sam Lee, Man City reporter at the, at, the, at the Athletic. We'll play you that interview shortly. Russell Hargraves, though, from Talk Sport. Is England 97 for one or 15.1? Calling it for Premier League World Feed on radio. Thank you so much for your time, mate. Uh, what a cracking game. Just uh, let, let's, let's establish that first. That's, that's the Premier League at its best. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you. It was a cracking game and it was very much in the balance for 70 plus minutes. And as much as City, I think, you know, largely with a team that were probably on top and, and deserved to win by the end, uh, Arsenal responded very well and also missed and created some very, very good chances. And perhaps City the more composed at times, the better structured and Arsenal having to force the issue, but, you know, not through lack of trying and not without some success, as you rightly say, in a, a really good game. And what we can safely say is these are the best two teams in the country by some distance the table certainly doesn't lie and it was quite right that it was first and second heading in and how seismic might this be that City for the first time in months now overtake Arsenal atop the table and sit top on goal difference well we asked before the game what a man City made of they they, they have just shown us that the question now goes back to Arsenal and to and to Arteta doesn't it okay uh, this is a real slap in the face but there's still a lot of games a lot of points out there you aren't in any other competitions to complicate things what are you made of yeah, it's a really, really good point. And obviously, Arsenal play first this coming match weekend as well. They head to Aston Villa, of course, a date back with their old boss, Unai Emery. That could be spicy. That's the lunchtime game, UK time. It's followed. Then I'll be back calling City's next game when they head to an improving Nottingham Forest at three. So to be fair, with their game in hand, which they still still have, Arsenal, they could then be back top going into that and saying back over to you, City. So it's certainly still got plenty to play for. The teams obviously meet again at the end of April at the Etihad as well. But I think the key point here, guys, is that psychological statement that City have made. They've got such an imperious, such a dominant head-to-head record against Arsenal. Arteta's got such a, a poor record at the moment against his old former mentor in Guardiola and all that side of things has continued. And Arsenal historically in recent years have been woeful when it comes to taking on the reigning champions. That's continued as well. So there's quite a few questions for Arsenal. And having been eight points clear a month ago, really puffing their chest out, responding to so many pressurised situations so effectively. I think of the Man United game that I covered for the club for Arsenal TV. That was a month ago. Wonderful win at the death there. Late goals, late drama, eight clear. Now with, what, one win in their last five, no wins in four, you do just wonder where they're heading from here. So their response to the next couple of games against Villa and Leicester is massive. In contrast for City, after their own blip, they're still not probably at their very, very best, but they're just refining their form at the best time. They've got so many options, so many quality performers, and you know, they have that swagger, that belief, that confidence, and they've kind of put the upstarts, dare I say, in their place for now. And it's not definitive, it's not pivotal, but you do wonder if this was a, a big, big step toward the end of season, maybe City winning that Premier League title again, as we say. Two halves, first half Arsenal competing, second half City overran them. What did you put it down to? Yeah, it's a good point. So obviously in that first half, we saw Eddie Nketiah miss a couple of good chances, a really well taken goal from Kevin De Bruyne. And what will really frustrate Mikel Arteta is for both of the first two City goals, that one that we've just mentioned, and then the crucial one on 72 scored by Jack Grealish, it was an Arsenal mistake that led to each of them. Tommy Asu back into the team, didn't really work brilliantly. His awful back pass, De Bruyne's great finish for the first, and then it's Gabriel who gives the ball away for the second. And as well as City then went through the gears and flowed their passes through to Grealish. That was ultimately another moment where they shot themselves in the foot. Back to your point, Arsenal did so well to equalise Bakaya Saka. Penalty, not penalty. We were slightly uncertain, but ultimately he was taken out in the Ketia by Edison. It was given. It was certainly not going to be overruled. And I thought Saka, after his penalty heartbreak with England all those months ago, just took it so calmly, so clinically. At that point, one all. It's so in the balance, isn't it? Yes, City kind of slightly fortuitously hit the bar through Ake when it rebounded off him and just about stayed out. Arsenal with more chances early in that second half. But when we hit to that 70 minute, for whatever reason, City just pulled away. I think some of it is the class. Some of it is probably the management of Pep. And some of it too is probably 
with the depth of that bench as well. Arsenal really miss Gabriel Jesus. Nketiah fluffed his lines, I'm afraid, in a big game. Would Jesus have probably performed better? I think the answer is yes. They miss one or two key performers. No Thomas Partey today was so, so costly. Jorginho, the Chelsea veteran who signed in January, came in for his first start. Did okay, but doesn't have that drive, that movement through midfield, that kind of real pomp that Partey gives the team. That was costly. City have just got that bit more quality, that bit more depth to their squad. And maybe Arsenal at times have papered over the cracks a little bit. And as much as Trossard has been a fine acquisition, have they done enough in January to have the squad that they need to compete right through to the end? On the evidence of tonight, when you compare it to City, bringing on, for example, the likes of Phil Foden, can you help stabilise the ship as well? There is a bit of a difference there, isn't there? So for quite a few reasons, City pulled clear. And when you've got someone like Erling Haaland, 32 goals now in all competitions this season, 26 in the Premier League. He was a proper all-round colossus today. So he held the ball up well. He was strong. That was when he was only half fit and was an injury doubt coming in. Just the one goal today, but his all-round display, as my commentator, co-commentator Chris Perry, the former Premier League defender, said to me, it's probably one of his best performances. And De Bruyne, when it mattered after a quiet run, of 13 games without a goal he stood tall when it mattered as well and yeah it just clicked and they got the job done so I think probably for some of those reasons that's why they pulled away toward the end and got that big win Devlin. platform. That's Russell Hargraves from a Talk Sport talking immediately after the game I mean it was a hell of a hell of a match great for the neutral I mean we always say that great for the neutral if you don't have any skin in the game for either Man City or Arsenal. And being a United fan, I don't. I mean, because I don't actually realistically think that we're in this title race. I think those two teams are, and those two teams still are. And even though Arsenal will be feeling pretty deflated about that, because they got outplayed by Man City. That's that's the worst thing about it. If they'd gone toe-to-toe and they got a bit unlucky, but they didn't, in the second half they got outplayed. And so now the big test for Arteta and Arsenal is how do you respond to this? And the way that they respond is by going to Aston Villa and beating them. Because you've got to remember, they've only lost three times all season. They lost to United at Old Trafford. They lost to Everton a couple of weeks ago, where they played terribly. And Everton just basically kicked them off the park, got three points. And now they've lost to Man City, where they got outplayed. Everyone else, they've had a couple of draws, but most of the other teams they've beaten. You've got to go back to that, to, to that state of mind and be confident about the fact, listen, you've gone out there and outplayed every team and, and beaten them well. Like, I, I can't remember seeing that many matches this year so far where I've actually thought Arsenal are going to lose that game. You know, they, they are a really good side. But, as Sir Alex Ferguson always said, the first one's the hardest to win. It's easier to win once you know how to win. They've got to understand how to win a title. And look, it took Liverpool 30 years after being the most dominant force in both English and European football, 30 years without a title. Got close, got close, got close, choked it, got close, choked it, got close. Finally won one. And you would have thought gone on from there, but haven't been able to do that so far. But Man City, when they won in 2012, and that's the first Premier League title for them, when Aguero scored that goal against, you know, you, you know, you got to remember, I mean, everyone thinks, oh, what an incredible moment, what an amazing moment in the Premier League. That was just about the biggest choke job ever. They were home to Queen's Park Rangers, who I think had already been relegated. They only had to beat them to win the title. They were 2-1 down when the 90th minute mark went and scored two in injury time or two in extra time or whatever. You know, they, they at one stage said they had a 12-point lead on Man United. They beat a 6-1 at Old Trafford that year. I mean, everyone remembers it because Aguero got the goal. That could have been the worst choke ever. And what would that have done to them? But they won it and they've built on that and overspent and cheated their way to many titles since, have they not? Devlin. I'm as proud as hell and I'm not going to take this anymore. The Platform. Title showdown then. You just heard from Russell Hargreaves, another interview that we recorded immediately at the conclusion of the game. Um, the Man City reporter, Sam Lee, from The Athletic, we spoke to. 340. Hell of a game. Sam, this is what I said to start with. Hell of a game. Real contest. Uh, a match worthy of the billing. It's a huge win for City. Um, being in the stadium, it, it just felt like the, the air went out of the balloon for Arsenal because see, look, City were much better in the second half than they were in the first but it still felt like Arsenal would get a goal I don't know if that's because well it's partly because of how, how they were playing the threat they've got on the break but it's the belief inside the stadium the fans were up for it you know Zinchenko was geeing up the, the fans from, from, from throw-ins and it just felt like they had all the energy it felt like all the breaks were going against City and I don't necessarily mean bad decisions I just mean you know getting the penalty but then getting overturned for offside 
you know, Grealish getting booked for descent. It just felt like everything was going against them. The three bookings in the first half, it was like, okay, th- this is not City's night. It's it's difficult, you know, and you could easily see Arsenal scoring on the break. And then to get those two goals, it just felt like two sucker punches. And like I say, it just felt like the air went out of the balloon. So yeah, immediate reaction is it's just it's just a massive win for City and you know, Arsenal are going to have to pick themselves up now. Maybe they do, but you know, there's, there's a big question about it now. It's very, very interesting. The title race. We, well, we always during the title race go back to pivotal moments, don't we? And you know, you'd be naive to suggest that hey, it's over now because there's way too many points and games left out on the table. But psychologically, oh, yeah. this is just massive. Yeah, it is. I, I mean, as much as as much as anything from the Arsenal point of view, you have got the City point of view. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Guardiola called out his own players. Um, so in terms of their hunger and desire, saying if you know, ask, no, if we play like we have been against Arsenal, they'll destroy us, and that was his words. You know, destroy. Um, it, the whole challenge was to match that kind of energy, enthusiasm that Arsenal got, which I just talked about. That enthusiasm inside the ground. I was with Arsenal fans beforehand, and you know, they were like it's the biggest game they've had there in years. The atmosphere was was great. They were really geeing them up, and there was that kind of belief inside the stadium that they would. And City had to match that, and they had all those. A win, and it's just such a massive win. It's the kind of win they haven't had this season. That's not the characteristic kind of performance they've had. A gritty win, they've had that in previous seasons, but not. So now you think, in terms of that psychological, what like the impact? Obviously, you've got the Arsenal situation now, where there's three games now where they've got what one point. So that's that's something people are going to be asking questions about. But in terms of City and proving to themselves the hunger and belief and fighting and determination and all that. That, that was it that was exactly what Guardiola was looking for that was it and where, like, where do they go from here like obviously it looks right now very good Sam Lee with us who's a Man City reporter at The Athletic I love the fact that you know you talk about it from an emotional perspective because that's what the game is it is about emotion it is about feeling you're talking about human beings and all of these intangibles actually do add up you could see it in those City players faces in the second mm. half I mean they actually start you know they, they started stringing passes they created those chances and I don't know whether it's self belief yeah. because these guys should have massive self belief I mean they're some of the best players in Europe but it's still football isn't it you've still got to go to a place you've still got to face you know, ninety percent of the crowd is against you. You still got to. You know, the referee might call a couple. You know, Arsenal got back into that game with the penalty. You know, all of that kind of stuff. You've actually got to have resolve. You've got to have some grit. You've got to have something. You really do exactly, exactly, and and that's the thing. Like, if this was the kind of soft city that Guardiola was worried about a couple of weeks ago, and not so much Guardiola was worried about, but like this, the performance in North London a couple of weeks ago when they lost to Tottenham if it was that city that day in these circumstances with all those things you just mentioned they just wouldn't have had whatever you, you call it to stay in the game but like I say it felt in the stadium like Arsenal would still get the win in the second half but City were much better you just mentioned there they started stringing the passes together they started doing all the things they needed to do and in that like, you know you don't want, it's not like a, a big triumph over adversity kind of thing but it was not favourable conditions to win a football match they would have felt like things were going against them and then yeah to, like I say I'm only kind of repeating myself now but to overturn all of that in these circumstances in that way is just so big and again just, just to add something I haven't said but on a similar theme like the celebrations like the press box where we are obviously a lot of the City players they went and celebrated over the far side with their fans but the ones who were kind of on the right wing or in defence they came and celebrated like with each other by the bench they were you know, just that's proper, you know, proper delirium at a football match. That you know, that's not. Oh yeah, we just scored a nice goal. Let's go and hug Haaland. It's, that is huge, and like, you can see that in in them. And I mean, look, I'm going to have to write an article after this. It's going to be about all of this stuff because it's just, it's so important. It, it, it it's it's just a really big game in the title race. It's just a massive result for City. That is, it really is. Two quick questions. I know you're really busy. We'll let you go, mate. But Haaland mm. stepping up. I mean, there have been questions about him. I don't know whether he was fully fit or anything else, but a beautifully taken goal. First touch was lovely. I mean, that was a real striker's goal, and that's what put Arsenal away in the end. Yeah, um, I didn't hear the name, but I presume you mean Haaland. Haaland, no, yeah. I think he was yeah. fine. Yeah, um, yeah I, I think he was, uh, he was He was. always fine. I don't think there was ever a fitness doubt about it. I think on Monday he he knew he was absolutely fine. And look, the, the interesting thing is with Guardiola, there's all different types of ways he's trying to make the team work. So it worked with Haaland, didn't it? And you think at some point, you could just leave Haaland out. Like if he did it with Aguero, he could do it with Haaland, but he won't. He's not doing it. Um, and that's that's why, isn't it? It's for those moments. If the ball falls to him in the box, you back him to score it. And like you say, exactly as you say, that was the thing that killed Arsenal off. It. Even with the time left, you thought, yeah, that's that's deflated it. Finally, just to explain to people who've never been to a game, you know, this is English football. Mm. You know, beautiful pitch, big crowd in seven thirty or eight o'clock at night kickoff. It doesn't get better than that, does it, mate? No, it was brilliant. Um, I went to meet. 
I actually went to meet a mate of mine who's an Arsenal fan and I bumped into some other lads who I didn't know before, but we were speaking before, like pub before the game, pint before kickoff. You know, they obviously had all the enthusiasm coming into the game. 7.30 kickoffs, good actually. It's not too late. We've got to get back to Manchester tonight. So that extra half hour has helped. It wasn't eight o'clock. Um, but yeah, as I was walking in through the crowds, like there was there was there was like a little side route I could have gone down, or you just head through the crowds. And I was like, no, I'm gonna, you go through the crowds. And that's the moment. Like I did actually have a kind of this job is pretty good moment. You know, as I was walking through those crowds before the game, I was like, this is the game everybody wants to be at. I've been with American fans who who were there, and all their mates back home were like really jealous. And it's like this is this is the place to be at the moment. It was one of those moments where you think, yeah, this is this is what it's all about. Um, yeah, that that experience for a game, look, it's good enough anyway. But for a game like this, that really means something. You know, those, you know, my mates in the, that city away and, you know, they'll have some sore heads in the morning. You know, this is, this is what it's all about. Devlin. Tomorrow! And Queen's Park Rangers have won it! The Platform.